friends, so it is another video on building the camera crawler. So I'm not even going to put the camera up top. I'm just going to set it down here to start with. So we're working on the transmission. And this should be kind of kind of fun, kind of interesting, and exciting because, well, it's actually a pretty decent transmission. They didn't build them like this when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I started building model airplanes. Gosh, I, I've been messing with model airplanes since I was, like, five. <laughs> My dad was into them. So anyway, here we are. Enough about enough about how old I probably am. So we've got E3, which is some more press metal stuff. Some really nice little press metal gears. Really impressive stuff. Some bearings. And a bunch of little plastic thingies that we're just going to shove over here. Little decorative pieces. Alright, so, looks like a piece of the frame. Ah, we'll set that off there. So it looks like, I uh, want to start with a little geary pieces. Yeah, so in here somewhere and the bearing and some screws and it looks like we do need some stuff out of here so we will separate this all off And we will start with many parts and end with fewer. So I don't think we need any of that, so we'll just push it off to the side. So we need to find that and that. And probably that. So we need a 27003. Nope, not that one. That looks like it. Yep, that looks like a 27003. Let's see if that fits in here. That one doesn't, but this one might. Yeah, what do you know? We've got a fit. So we'll set that there. kind of feeling it. Okay, so we're going to need the thread locker. Well, that could be it. Yep, yeah, I think those are M2 by 6. Let's see, I think these are the smallest one. Yep, yeah, there we go. So, looks like, I 
but what I'm doing is filling each hole with a dab of thread locker. And then I will start to put this together. So and this is really, really the hard part is. So we're just going to kind of fiddle with it. Alright, so we got the first one in. And I'm not going to tighten it all the way because I want to get them all three in before I do. So that's the third one. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring them to snug. Okay, so there we go. And you can see the little bit of thread locker peeking out the back. But this looks good. So that's one piece assembled. Now we need. Nope, not that. We need this shaft in this orientation. Twelve, eighteen. It's probably those. All right, that looks like a good contender. So we'll go ahead and push this in here, and then we can. Yeah. Okay, that works. So that sticks out. And there is a little pin that goes in here, and this is going to call for tweezers again, because this is really a tough thing to get to. So this little pin goes in here. And the tweezers just simplify the process. Alright, and then we're looking for this. So that, that'll stay together, and then we need another one of these, yep, that's right. And then we need a bigger one of these, 1225, and then this goes through here. That looks nice. Needs some grease on it. Alright, it's plenty of grease. Alright, and now we've got this. It goes up on here. but it doesn't. So we need to figure out... So we're going to insert that into there. And then we're going to put 
pull this one off. And one second. Okay. So I'm just getting money for doing drone work there, so it's making my phone go berserk. was relatively harmless. Pretty smooth. Alright, so now let's figure out what screws go in here. One forty sixes. Nope, that's not it. But that is. Looks like at this stage, we'll just get one of these in here. Uh, yeah, okay, it's a multi layer transmission, that's what's going on. Alright, so now we need this piece, and the first thing we need is this and this, so then this goes in here. Alright, so we need to think this one through. So I'm not interested in the dig function, but I need the rest of this to work. So we're just going to play with this for a second to see how... Alright, that looks like that's how this goes together. Yep, okay, that's how that goes. So we need, in the far end... Yep, we need one of these way down there. Alright, so that goes in. And then... Looks like there are 
are some screws that go in from the back side. Doesn't call for thread lock, but I'm going to put it in there anyway because I don't want any of this stuff coming apart and it's going to be subject to vibrations. AXA 144, those are 3 eighths. 3 by 8 by 2 millimeter. So I think that's that. Just spinning it by hand until it engages. And that other Okay, so that's in. That looks identical on both sides. Now we've got to put this together. So there's supposed to be an e-clip in here. I'm not seeing it. Oh, there it is. So we're going to use the trick we used hip on the other video where we use the tweezers to get it in position and then we use the pliers to snap it in place. Alright, so it looks like it's time for some field modification, so let's see where that goes.
Let me see if I can find that E2 clip that I jump ship for me. All right, I found the little bugger. Now, where were we before we so aggravatingly disrupted? I used to have a teacher in sixth grade who used to say, when somebody would interrupt us, he would say, now where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? His name was Mr. Larson, and he lived in Port Angeles, Washington. He was a good teacher. So we're going to shift strategies on this. and the way I have to hold my hands to these little clips are really the devil to manipulate all right there we go all right so now where were we before we were so rudely interrupted yeah. Okay, so this goes like this. And then we need the spacer. I think it's this little one. Yeah. And that keeps it from pulling. I don't know where it would pull to because I don't see any kind of spring. I don't see anything that would allow it to move, but. Yeah, we'll just follow the instructions for the moment. And then to insert this, we're going to do this upside down because I don't want that little spacer to fall inside there. There we go. And here's our little key thing. Sorry, you can't see. And this is the same problem we've had before where we need to ream out. just the beginning so you can get the thread started.
So if I had a dig, it would pull this back, but it doesn't. So I guess that just disables this lock. And that would be backwards, so... Grease called for. Something's not right here. So that doesn't go any further in. I think there's an issue with that spacer. So I'm going to have to undo this. And I'll need pliers for that. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave the handle off for the moment. I'll, no, I can't do that because there's no way to tighten it. So I'm going to put this together and just kind of feel how this works. So that pushes that forward. Alright, so that allows that. see how I don't see how that does anything the only thing I could see that doing is you pull it back but this doesn't even move I know what it's supposed to do, I just can tell you that with the E-ring, there's nowhere for it to move. So I'm going to take it apart again, just kind of play with it until I figure out what is actually going on here.
I think it's a mistake in the instructions. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. But this is exactly that size, so I think that's where that belongs. Now for the fun part. Okay, so... See, now that looks more like it makes sense. And again, we're just going to fight with this until we get it in place. Because it's so hard, it's difficult to actually manipulate. can snap this on maybe by hand. Or maybe not. There we go. So now let's see what happens when we put this together. See, now it can actually move. And you could disengage this. I still don't quite know what this does. But I'm going to throw the spacer in here. And that locks it out of the back. And we can change this later. because I don't have the I don't have the little servo that it would require to operate the tr this lock in lock out So that makes sense. Okay, so Before this goes in, all right, so AX148, AX148, and then A146, all right, so we got all those laid out, and now let's find this. starting to make some sense. Got to tinker with this a little bit. Now that becomes a an actual transfer shaft. And what we want to see is that, yes, that rotates at all times and we can't unlock it. 
that's what we want to see. So you got two large screws, two small screws. And if we rotate this so that it is in the same orientation, the small screw is down here. I think that makes sense. We'll do it first. So the small screw goes up here by the top. Big screws go in the deep holes. feels a little over spec but everything else feels tight so we're gonna go with it and this is still latched in place so I, I'm, I'm fine with that all right so let's start looking at what we're doing up here so now we're gonna start assembling on this threaded shaft we've got Looks like some primitive clutch discs and a gear. So it goes with a disc, a clutch, and I think in order to get this clutch to sit properly, this needs to be in here. larger and a lock nut. And so we're just going to be naughty here. That's snug. I don't think it needs to be anything else. It's a lock nut. pretty good to me. Alright, so now we've got the front part of the transmission that needs to be put together. So we've got a 
shaft apart. So the shaft goes here. And then we've got two more bearings. So we drop a bearing. Uh, the bearings overlock. That. All right, so that's the deal here. So you got a bearing on each side of that. That's a nice design right there. That means this gear can handle a fair amount of pressure. Which makes sense because I think this is an input gear. The hard part's getting these in straight. Just gotta be careful. So, bearing, gear, bearing, washer. Now, let's find that little washer. There it is. It's an odd critter. Not listed anywhere, but I'm pretty sure that's it. for some black grease. So I'll go ahead and put that on there. setting out my screws so I've got them all identified. Alright, so at this point, now that is going to go into here. Understand this. There we go. That's what we wanted to see right there. So those are my two smalls go at the bottom. This so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I can work in a position that's comfortable for me. Two millimeter Allen driver. towel under my desk which catches these and keeps my feet off the cold floor. Right. 
So at that point, the transmission is assembled. So we've got one output shaft and two output shafts. Mm, that bothers me a little bit. I can't turn it. Ooh, we can't turn it with a lot of pressure. So let's see what happened. That's kind of odd. Guess I over tighten this case. So I'm just going to snug it and see what happens. I think maybe I had a gear out of mesh or something, because it seems to be fine now. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it could be the clutch just kicking in as these screws tighten down. That seems too tight to me, though. So we're going to leave it there. I think it's still snug. All right, now we need the motor. Woo, we're starting to actually do something. Again, check the description for a list of the components being used. This is a nice little inexpensive axial motor.
So we're going to put it together. Yeah, we're going to AX109, which will be this. This. So I'm going to put thread lock on this because this is something I expect to get a lot of abuse. You only need a drop. loose at first because see, this needs to be adjusted. Alright, and then we've got this and we've got a lock there. Nope, that's not it. There it is. We've got a set screw. Pretty sure it'll be on this one. Yep, it is. And again, we want to put thread locker in here because that's something that's suggesting that's all you need. Doesn't doesn't require a lot. So now what we want to do is we want to get this in here and get these gears lined up. And this is where eh, even I over tightened it, and I was trying not to. Slide that out, drop this in, and then we'll bring this, and what I'm doing is I'm lining this up. I want to get good gear mesh, because the gears are what transmit the, the power, and then I'll set the distance between the gears to something comfortable. Alright, and it is a 2 millimeter apparently. There we go. So you can see here I'm setting the how far out the gear stick, and then I'm going to give it a good twist. So now that that's in, now I'm going to come back and I'm going to basically set the motor in so that it's far enough that it turns, but close enough that it meshes. And what you're aiming for... Apparently that's still moving, that sucks. That's okay, we'll get it meshed and then we'll deal with it. So now we'll check this. Yeah, that looks good. So now we will spin this to a point where we can get to the set screw. Alright, 
So now that we've got the set screw available, pull that out. Uh, so the problem is here. This is our two millimeter wrench. Let me find it. And as promised, the next time I had to screw with this, I was going to put thread locker on it. doesn't take much. So what we're looking for is that little keyway. And then that should give us a good solid bite. I think we got it. Oh. All right, let's see if that gave it to us. Yes. All right, so then let's test this again. That looks good. And now I'm going to go ahead and think we're done with the transmission. Maybe, maybe not. No, I think this little cover goes over here. But we need to put some grease on this. AXA-144 is our little tiny screws. We've got two of these left. That's what we need. So these go over here. This thing's going to have uh, some torque. It's a slow motor with a lot of step down involved at multiple stages. And that's the advantage to building this. I you guys can't see, sorry. That's the advantage to building this, putting it together myself, is I get to choose the components and tailor it to my needs. All right, I am not doing the um, lockout or skid or whatever they call it. I'm, I'm just not doing that. Don't need it, so it's not happening. The rest of this looks really good. Let me make sure it still turns. That's good. So we will see what is next. Okay, so next we're coming over to here, and I'm skipping all of the stuff that's related to the servo, so that's just not, so all of these steps here aren't happening because I don't need, what do they call it, dig, yeah, I'm not doing dig because, you know, I'm building a crawler to go under houses.
There we go. That's it. Oh, that's looking nice. Alright, so let's figure out what we need. They're all slanted screws. So AX 144 by 1, that'd be this boy. And then 144 by 3, that would be those. And should have one more slanty screw. That ain't it. There it is, it's hiding from me. Yeah, okay, so these are two millimeter socket heads. Yeah. And where did So I'm going to probe these to figure out where the shallow one is. So the 146 has to be over there. So we know this is deep, so we'll put a 144. That's interesting. Two millimeter. Let me see where that should go. So it's a two and a half millimeter screw, which is really similar. So 
So it should have gone into the servo. All right, that's good. It didn't. These are all servo bits. That's all servo stuff. So, I'm missing a screw, but this should be the same length and diameter. It just won't seat quite as deep. And it's not going to hurt anything to have a head sticking out. So, that's what we'll substitute. And that's fine. I mean, it's the wrong screw, but it'll be okay. So, that's it. And remember to like and subscribe. Check out the playlist. And I'm going to um, stop and download this, and then I will start on the dry shaft.